right? In the first quarter, he's right there at the top of the numbers on the 40. That's what you call a condensed split. Looking at it down in distance, where do they go? Just go ahead and run this and just watch how he runs his route, right? He comes off with speed, right? Gets the guy, gets the corner going. Now, you got to go back. I want to stop right before, right? As soon as he's going, pause right there. You see that? When I talk about getting a guy outside of the framework of your body, that corner is outside the framework of his body. Now he's he's slow backpedaling, but he gets once he gets outside of his framework, he now has to drive on the ball. But when he drives on the ball, he has to gather step, mm -hmm. then step, 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 and then go, which puts you behind. And Zay does that because he uses his speed and his tempo to understand if I come off tempo, it's going to bring off a red flag to the corner. Mm -hmm. Great job uh, by Zay. Good job by Lamar seeing that. He knows what they're doing. They're in man-to-man -man coverage. Because of the run game, they have to be in man-to-man -man coverage, which really ended up being the reason why the commanders fell behind because they had to play man coverage. They're a more zone coverage team. When they can pin their ears back, play in zone, mm -hmm. make the quarterback think, that benefits the commanders. But they couldn't do that with King Henry because of how they're running the football. Mm -hmm. So we got this play down going at the 11-yard line. Just watch this route. His speed comes in there, right? Mm. I like this. This is kind of like a hinge. But what I really like is the physicality, the toughness. Look, guy uses his arm guard, throws it off. That little point, he's letting them know, look, I got you. And that's going to play into a benefit for Zay later in the game. He doesn't get the football, but he lets him know, one, one, what? I can run by you. Two, if you try to arm bar me, I will throw you off me. Mm -hmm. So now he's giving them data and information to that corner. This didn't work. That didn't work. Now let's go to the next play. He's up at the top of the numbers. They're going most of it likely. So indicating is a man, is a zone. Man coverage, He's tell, they're telling him pass. Boom. Ah, ah. Crosses his this face. This P.I. They set up the Henry touchdown. Yes. It's a big play. It's a P.I. Look. Ah, ah. Goes across his face. But what I love is he hits his hand down, right, using his physicality, uses, hits his hand down, which allows the corner to what we call slingshot through. Yeah. Grabs Try him to around undercut the Try to undercut the, uh, the throw of the ball. That's when I talked about when – remember last week when I was saying that um, Keon Coleman – Sometimes he doesn't go downhill. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. going to show you why with Zay later, going downhill, getting back friendly is important to secure and, and take care of the throw when the quarterback. So he's down here at this, in a, uh, in a Cadiz formation, goes. Watch this. You see how he comes back, back. downhill? Yep. When you come back downhill, now that throws off the corner. Look, see how the corner's still going. But he goes back downhill. That was allow him to shield himself between ball, mm -hmm. receiver, defender. That is a reliable receiver, and that's what makes your quarterback trust you. Steve, he plays a lot bigger than he is, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Because yeah. he also knows his speed, and he's utilizing his speed to kind of open up his routes. Mm -hmm. And then every so often, he'll do something like this. Look, spin. You know, two guys takes two guys to tackle. Yeah. I kept hearing last year, I remember doing their game in Cincinnati, and I kept talking to their guys on the offensive side of the ball. They're like, we think we got one, man, because this dude is way tougher to bring down, yep. I think, than people understand. So we go go ahead and go to the next play. Now, this play I really love. He's in the slot right now, so they give him a variation. Look, at fighting through. Look Ooh, at it works this. works right into him. R yes. So go to the end zone copy on this one, because this is extremely important. He's leaning. See how he's leaning mm -hmm. on the, def the defender's leaning on him. He's fighting through. But what does he do? He gives him a little chicken wing. Ah. Yeah. Elbow while he's, leaning, while he's leaning on him. So he hits him in the gut, leans on him, but the corner's leaning on him and doesn't anticipate. When he leans on him, the corners think he's going back towards the corner. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Nope. Ah, Jedi mind tricked you. Ta-ta. <laughs> corner falls. Look at that. Goes inside. Bow, bow. Love that. Love it, love it, love it. Doesn't get to play, but he gets data into that corner. And he creates Knowing, space. hey, you're in trouble. 
This is a play that just, I doubt it. He doesn't get the ball, but watch this. Yeah, yeah. Oh, a little spin little, him like a top. Little hitch in the step. Yes, that's what you call a rocker step. So he gets up there, gets him. See, this is what I'm talking about. Data information. He's got this corner questioning himself. Because he's showing him everything now. He's showing him everything. Now, he's over there puppet master. He's trying to figure out, now I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and that sets it up. But what it uh, does do, it sets up next week against the new corner because now the new corner says, hey, I've seen this, I've seen that, mm -hmm. I've seen this. Now, that's where, where you're smart is. You have a few plays to where he looks like he's doing the end, he looks like he's doing the end, and what he's really gonna do, what I call, give him a little shake seven where he goes, I hear, head fake, goes opposite way, boom! Big play. It's been impressive, Steve. Yeah, it's been impressive, impressive for a few reasons. I mean, he's got back-to-back -back career highs in two weeks, right? 111 yards two weeks ago, goes for 132, off of nine catches, off of nine targets in the first half in this game last Sunday. He actually didn't get targeted in the second half. Everything you saw uh, from in terms of catching the football happened in the first half. And what we're seeing, Steve, is all these defenses. As you mentioned, he's showing all these different things at defenses. Defenses yep. are trying to figure out how to stop this group. Lamar admitted after the game to us that this is the most balanced team offensively he's ever been a part of. You mentioned the man that... that Washington was in. I mentioned where I was watching the game from that press box. It's kind of down towards the end zone. You're able to kind of see. It was single high, load the box, almost every single play, trying to stop Derrick Henry. That puts them in man. Then when we saw different approaches, the way teams have tried to stop this command, stop this uh, Ravens team this year, and each one, they've had a way to beat it, right? You know, like yep. the Bills wanted to sit in nickel, so okay, let's just pound the football. Like against, mm -hmm. you know, the Cowboys, you want to take out their edge rushers, you just run the ball on the perimeter, and you just run the ball at their edge rushers. And so they have a way, it seems right now, Steve, to beat almost every type of way you want to line up because of the bounce. And when you have a receiver getting to the level that Zay's getting with the way you brilliantly broke that down in terms of all the different ways that he can approach corners and find different ways to get open, when you have Lamar throwing it the way he's throwing it, that's back-to-back -back over 300-yard games. He hasn't done that since 2021. He's playing at a better level than he did in both his MVP seasons right now through six games. And you add Derrick Henry to the mix. When I was in the commander's locker room, I heard from a couple people, it's not really fair that Lamar Jackson gets Derrick Henry. I mean, it, it, it almost makes this offense have an argument, Steve. Are they the best unit in football offensively right now and have a chance to do that? Because I know some guys in the Ravens were going, I wish we could play Kansas City right now again because we've grown as an offense from what we were probably in those first two weeks. Well, look, I, that's what you want, though. You want yeah. each week you to get better, and I believe... You know, I'm not biased because I have all this Raven stuff back here. Not at all. I know. But I do understand and look from afar that Coach Munkin was obviously with the University of Georgia. There was some there was some little moaning and groaning in his first year that things weren't great. But having a full off season and kind of implementing now you have a run game and all of a mm -hmm. sudden things are looking a little different. I would tell you the only thing that is tough. Offensively, I can understand what the Ravens are and yep. saying they wish they had an opportunity to play the Kansas City uh, Chiefs at this moment. But the way they're playing, they're going to get their opportunity yeah. later in the season when it really counts in the playoffs, right, where all that data. But the mm -hmm. problem that I'm concerned about as a former, you know, as a as they say, I have dual citizenship here in Carolina, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but also uh, they say as a Raven, once a Raven, always a Raven. True story. The thing that's a little bit wonky for me has to do with uh, Coach Orr. You know, he's getting better mm -hmm. as a defensive coordinator, but his players are also understanding the responsibility. Coach McDonald, Mike McDaniel, Donald, who's now the head coach of the Seattle Seahawks, he ran a different defense. He, mm -hmm. he was different. There's different keys there. There's also different players. Uh, on that defense compared to a year ago. So that's the difference, I think, with the uh, Baltimore Ravens from week one to now week six has to do with the defense and the familiarity and the comfortability that these guys are having with their yeah. new defensive coordinator and the new defensive players as well. Yeah, put a little bow tie on this, Steve. What I gathered being at the game, asking around within the organization, a few things. Dean Pease, smart move to bring him back on that defensive Smart. side of the ball and what you're talking about. And, you know, this was brought up to me too. 
Mike McDonald, when he started taking over that defense, it didn't go great the first five, six, seven games. No, there were some did questions not. there. So they are comfortable with John Harbaugh has always given guys time, right? Giving coaches time to get into it. Dean P is also a big part. Denard Wilson losing him on the back end, though, asking around as a secondary coach, that's a big loss. Like, like yeah. he, he coached that position really, really well. And I know a lot of people say this might be a team that, hey, do they go after another receiver in this group? My understanding would be they'd try to add to the other side of the ball if they did anything at the trade deadline. I think that adds up with uh, what you're saying, Steve.